this video, we are going to take a look at the DualSense Edge and the Xbox Elite Series 2 to see which one's better for fighting games. This is the box for the Edge. Really nice looking. It's hard plastic. And this is the Xbox Elite 2. Really nice as well. It's got this cloth material. If you open up the Edge, you get a controller itself. Four back paddles. Four additional dome stick caps. You can see here one pair is going to be shorter than the other. Get a really long braided cable here. You get this little clamp. Put in here. Close it up. Put on a controller. And then you can lock it so the cable will not get unplugged if you yank on it. With the Elite Series 2, you also get the controller. A nice braided cable. While the Xbox does not have this cable lock, what it does have that the Edge doesn't have is a wireless charging station. If you're someone who prefers to play wirelessly, the Xbox is the better option. But if you prefer to play wired, then the Edge is the way to go. You also get four additional thumbstick caps. However, you only get one long one here. This is concaved. We do have a shorter dome stick cap and you get two shorter ones concaved. The stick caps on the Elite is a lot more premium than on the Edge. On the Elite, you see the stem here is made out of metal. You can definitely feel the weight on this guy. And on the Edge, it's just plastic. Super light. You get four extra paddles here. And they go on like this. Super clicky and tactile. However, because the paddle kind of runs into the handle here, sometimes you accidentally click them when you're playing and just greasing the controller. On the Edge, you can only have two of them at a time. These pairs are kind of like on the Xbox. They kind of run into the handle. You can also use the shorter paddles here. I'm a huge fan of these because they don't get in the way. Personally, these guys are my favorite back paddles on any controllers. They're super clicky, gets out of the way, and just feels really good. In terms of build quality, I think both the Edge and the Elite Series 2, they're both built really well. The Edge is a little bit bigger, it's just a little bit wider and longer. So if you have big hands, the DualSense Edge is probably better for you. Even though smaller, I feel that the Elite Series 2, it's just more comfortable to use. Look at this, it just fits perfectly in my hands. Because of the angles of the handles, there's really no bending of the wrist at all. With the Edge, the handles are kind of vertical. So your wrist bends a little bit more, but it's not uncomfortable. It just doesn't feel as good as on the Xbox controller. The Elite Series 2, you also get this guy. It's like a little cell phone SIM tray thingy. With this, you can adjust the resistance of the sticks. You don't have that option for the DualSense Edge. And the resistance on these are about the same as the medium setting on the Xbox controller. Although you can't adjust the resistance, what you can do with the DualSense Edge is you pop this open. There's these levers here that you can take the joystick modules out. Once they go bad, you can replace them. This is Sony's way of solving stick drifts and you cannot do that with the Elite Series 2. However, I would prefer if both of these have magnetic hall effects technologies, especially for the Edge since it's newer. The Elite Series 2 was released a while ago, so hopefully the Series 3 will have it. With the Elite Series 2, you can also replace the D-pad. Here's the traditional cross-shaped D-pad. You also have the option for this disc D-pad as well. This cross-shaped D-pad is better for 3D fighters. It's a lot more precise for cardinal directions. Diagonals are pretty accurate with these guys. However, I do not like the fact that there's not a lot of travel on this cross-shaped D-pad. Look at this. Some of you may prefer that. Personally, I don't. And you can also see there's this concave area here that makes the travel even shorter on the edges. But the good news with the Xbox controller, you can replace it with this disc D-pad. This disc D-pad is not as precise at cardinal directions, so the diagonals are not 100% accurate here. But because it is a disc, it's great for motion inputs. If you're planning to get one of these guys, cross shape for 3D fighters, disc for 2D fighters. However, I'm not a huge fan of this disc D-pad. For one, it's not as accurate for diagonals. And two, the edges are super sharp. So if you're like me 
and you slide your thumb around the edges so that you have a better feel for the D-pad, your thumb's gonna get torn up. However, I do have some good news for you. Microsoft released an updated version of this. This is the core and take a look at the edges on this D-pad. It's rounded off. This makes it a thousand times more comfortable to use. And quietly, this D-pad has become my go-to 2D fighter D-pad. It's just so good. Unlike the cross-shaped D-pad where you don't have a lot of travel, and also because it's smaller in size, it's a little bit heavier. With the disc, you get a lot more travel. And because it's bigger, it's a little bit lighter too if you press on the edges. And one other thing that I really love about Xbox controllers is the switches are metal. On the Sony controllers, like the Edge here, they use rubber dome based switches. So it feels kind of mushy. You don't get that tactility like you do with the Xbox controller. The downside though, because they're metal based switches, they're really loud. If you need a quieter controller, then get the Edge. You can barely hear it. While you have two options of D-pads on the Xbox, you only get one with the Edge. If you like the D-pads on the DualShock 4 or DualShock 3, then you're gonna like this guy. It's very similar. I do think that this D-pad is better for 3D fighters than 2D fighters though. Cardinal directions are great. However, motion inputs are not so great because of these raised edges. I like to slide my thumbs at the edges so that I can feel the D-pad. And over a long session of just sliding it back and forth, it's not good for your thumb. But if you use it in short spurts, you should be okay. The button themselves are on the heavier side, so you're gonna have to exert a little bit more force on this guy versus the Series 2. It's a little easier to press. Another thing of note, these look like four separate buttons, right? But they're not. You see how I'm moving one button and all of them are also moving. So occasionally, in the heat of battle, if you hit the down button, for example, on the edge, you can also activate the back button. So you gotta be careful and hit the whole thing downward, so that way you don't have missed inputs. On the regular dual sense, look at this. It's just all over the place. On the edge, there's barely any wiggles at all, so that improves the missed inputs a lot. And of course, the biggest difference between the joysticks for the Xbox versus PlayStation controllers is their placements. On the Edge, they're side by side. But on Xbox controllers, they're offset. This design is great for shooters, but I prefer my D-pad to be up here instead. So I prefer the positioning of the D-pad on the PlayStation controller. The face button on the Xbox controller, super clicky. Very responsive and tactile. With each press of the button, you can really feel it going in and out. Again, this is due to the metal base switches. Not so much for the edge. You can barely feel it. Just really soft and linear. There's not a lot of tactility here. The face buttons on the edge here are spaced out quite a bit. You see there's a lot of space here. Right? If you have smaller thumbs, you're going to have trouble reaching both of them at the same time. On the Elite Series 2, it's a lot closer. It's not as spaced out, so it's a lot easier to press both buttons at once. Personally, I love the Xbox buttons. The shoulder buttons work fine on the Xbox controller. You can press it from the inside or the outside. I prefer to use my knuckles to press these, but you can see there's this anchor in the middle here. It doesn't get fully depressed, you see that? On the edge, it's not like that. They're separate buttons. I honestly prefer it this way better. It's just easier to access. But I do prefer the Xbox triggers better. You see how there's this curve, right? So it feels like a real trigger. Whereas on the edge, it just goes straight down. There's not a lot of curve here. It just feels like a long button, to be honest with you. You see how on the Xbox, it curves out quite a bit. The Xbox trigger kind of wraps around your finger. Both the Elite Series 2 and the Edge have trigger locks. They both have three levels. This is the shortest on the Xbox. Not a lot of travel at all. Medium. And then full tilt. On the Edge, even at the shortest setting, there's still quite a bit of travel. Unlike on the Xbox. The Xbox feels like you're pressing a button. Personally, I don't love this for the shortest setting. 
The travel is just too much here. It doesn't feel like a button at all. On the edge, you also get these two additional buttons. Unfortunately, you cannot map these buttons as another set of paddles. You can only use this for like manual navigations. With the DualSense, you get adapt triggers. You can get force feedback with these triggers, which is super cool. You don't get that with the Xbox controller. You also have haptic feedback here, which is super cool. For example, if it's raining, you can feel it rumble just like it's raining. Not so much on the Xbox controller, just regular old rumble. Alright, let's talk about the input lag for both controllers. Let's start with the Elite Series 2. Both wired and on Xbox Wireless, they both have the same polling rate, which results in the same amount of input delay. However, on wired, the connection is a lot more stable. You see the variance here between minimum and maximum is very little. But on Xbox Wireless, in terms of stability, you get a wider variance here. It's better on the core than on the Elite Series 2. The Xbox Series 2 is 64 Hz, but on the core, it's a little bit higher at 70. And that results in a tiny bit of difference in input delay. We went from 15 to 14. With the Elite Series 2, you get the same polling rate here on Bluetooth. Same thing here on Xbox Wireless. But the variance here is huge. Goes from less than a millisecond to 60 milliseconds. On the core, surprisingly on Bluetooth, it's a lot faster than on the old Series 2. And the variance is a lot smaller than on the Series 2. If you're planning to get the Elite Series 2, I recommend getting the core. Now if you go to the Edge Wireless, look at this polling rate. Over 600, 628 Hz to be exact. You get less than 2 milliseconds of input delay. Compare that to the teens on the Xbox. But on wireless though, the connection is not very stable. The variance is really big. And if you plug it in, look at the variance. It's tiny, super stable. There's only a couple of milliseconds of difference here. And the polling rate is off the charts. Are you looking at this? At over 1100 hertz. <laughs> I don't know how this is possible. And you get less than one millisecond of input delay. It's instantaneous. If you're somebody who really care about input delay, then the Edge is the way to go. So which one is better for fighting games? If you're somebody who really cares about input lag, then it's the DualSense Edge. The controller works really well. It's just that the material and the feel of it is not as good as on the Xbox. I personally prefer the look and feel of the Xbox controller. This is a lot more comfortable to me. I love the tactility, the way the buttons are positioned. And the Xbox is just more versatile. Play 2D games, put on this guy. 3D games, put on this guy. If you play a lot of 2D games, I recommend getting the Xbox controller. But if you play more 3D games, then the DualSense Edge. As you know, I am somebody who cares a lot about input lag, so I always turn to the DualSense Edge. But if you're somebody who play more than just fighting games, then I recommend the Elite Series 2. I feel that the Xbox Series Elite 2 is a lot more pro because it's a lot more adjustable than the Edge. Aside from the back paddles, you really cannot adjust anything on the Edge. In the end, I feel that the Elite Series 2 is a better controller, but the Edge is the undisputed king when it comes to input lag. Hopefully for the Series 3, Microsoft can turn the polling rate on this guy way up to match the Edge. Then you would have the perfect controller. But for now, when I play 2D fighters, I use the Xbox controller. For 3D fighters, I use this guy. That's going to be it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe for more, and take care now.